Have you ever wanted to record a video with a unique background? Perhaps you want to make it appear as though you're in a different location, or it might just be that you find yourself in a boring home studio setup or work environment and you need to convey a different look on your video with a unique backdrop. Otherwise, you might want to place face to camera video over some game recording or a DJ session or whatever it might be. Whatever the scenario you have in mind, we're going to need a green screen and some video editing software to get the job done. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a small green screen studio at home, and then I'll show you how to edit that video in post-production using Filmora, which is an awesome high quality video editor available for Mac and Windows and even mobile devices. There's a free version and also paid plans available, even a perpetual license that gives you access to all of the advanced features including film stock, effects, and ongoing updates. Now, before we get onto that, let's take a look at the actual hardware setup. First of all, you do need a good working space to set up your green screen studio. It could be a room as small as three or four square meters, but if you have more space available, the more space, the better, so that you can position your camera at least one or two meters away and have some light set up in front of you and also pointing on the backdrop itself. So in an ideal world, in terms of lighting, you would have a key light and a fill light on the subject, and then you'd have two lights on the backdrop itself. But quite often, we either don't have the space to do that or the budget to set up that many lights. So even if you only have one key light or a key and a fill light, as I have for this scene, that should be enough to create a decent green screen backdrop. So having said that, once your lighting is in place, obviously you're gonna to need to put a green screen behind you. I have this Salen's foldable backdrop here, which has both a green and blue surface so that I can choose whether I'm going to be using green screen or blue screen on my videos. Why are the different options available? Well, that's gonna depend on the clothes that you're wearing. So if I was wearing a green top, I would opt to use a blue screen, and if I was wearing a blue top, I would go for the green screen, because obviously we don't wanna be keying our body out when we're doing a green screen or blue screen key. So that's why you have different colors. So pick the color that best works with the clothing that you happen to be wearing. I tend to wear neutral colors anyway, blacks with a little bit of red or white, so it doesn't really matter which one I choose. But for this example, I'm gonna run with the green screen. So let's go ahead and set this backdrop up. To set it up, you just need to unfold it, and then you'll need some kind of a stand to put it up on. At the very least, you could just prop it up on a chair against the wall, but if you have a light stand and a C-clamp, you're going to be able to get it in the exact position that you need for your green screen. So I'm gonna use this light stand by Creative Lights. I've got this clamp which I purchased on Amazon. I'll leave a link to all of these items in the description box below if you're interested. And I've also got this extension arm which I'm gonna to use to mount the backdrop onto. Okay, so I've just set up the green screen behind me. And as you can see, I'm standing about 10 centimeters away. So it's casting a little bit of a shadow. So for best results, step forward. If you can anywhere up to a meter away from the green screen itself to minimize shadows falling on the green screen. And this will produce a cleaner background, makes it easier to key in post-production. But if you don't have the space, you can still stand right in front of the green screen and you can deal with those shadows in post-production. The only other thing to consider is that you may not have fully covered the background behind you. As you can see, this green screen only covers the midsection of my 16 by nine widescreen crop. So that means that I have to be careful when I move around that I don't extend my arms outside of the bounds of the green screen behind me. So I'm actually monitoring this video because I've got my Canon EOS R with a flip screen pointed in my direction so I can actually see what I'm doing. And as soon as I see my hands moving off screen, I would bring them back in and just keep sure that I'm always presenting within this confinement of the green screen backdrop. Ideally, if you have a large enough green screen, you can cover the whole frame behind you. But in many cases, you'll find when you purchase these online, they're of a certain size that you might not cover that full backdrop. So. It's not really an issue because we're gonna take care of that by cropping out those sides in post-production using Filmora. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and take a look at the editing process using Filmora. 
Okay, so we have Wondershare, Filmora open and ready to go. The first thing I'm going to do is select the aspect ratio of my project. For this example, I'm gonna create a 16 by nine widescreen video. If you're creating videos for Instagram and you need a square aspect ratio or a vertical portrait format, you can select that format accordingly. I'm gonna stick with a 16 by nine and click on new project. To get started, I'm going to import the media into my project and I'm going to use that face to camera footage that I shot for this particular project. I'll click on the import media option and it will appear in the media window. I can then drag it onto the timeline and I'll just right click and ripple delete so that it goes to the beginning of the track. Now, the section that I wanna create green screen is further along, so I'm gonna go and make a cut in that footage to the point where I have some green screen, there we go. To make a cut, I'm gonna select Control-V and I'll get rid of the footage that I don't need. So as I mentioned earlier, provided you've shot on either a blue or green screen or really any other color for that matter, you're ready to key out the background. To get started, I'm going to lift that video onto the track above so that we have a layer below that I can place a background. So I'm going to go into the stock media tab, click on Pixabay. There are so many great videos available to use as a green screen backdrop here. So you can spend as long as you need until you find the suitable graphic or video loop to place behind your green screen. So I'm gonna select this spiral video loop here. And I'm gonna hide the top layer so we can have a look at what it looks like. Click play. That's not a bad example. Might grab a second one so we can try it out on a couple of different backdrops. So there's just a few examples of the available stock video loops that you can use right within Filmora in the Pixabay tab it's gonna give you the ability to create any kind of background and you can even use these videos for other storytelling components of your video. So let's get back to the green screen aspect of the tutorial. So we've got all of our background loops on video layer one at the base of the timeline. And then on layer two, we have our green screen footage. Now, before we go in and key out our footage, we're just gonna quickly apply some color correction to this video clip so that it's optimized before we key the footage out. To do that, click on the video clip and then click on the edit tool. Click on the color tab and under color enhancement, we can apply an auto color correction or if you like, you can adjust the white balance and tone manually. Usually you wanna apply a little bit of additional contrast on your video and maybe add or reduce saturation. Or if you're feeling adventurous, you can click on the advanced tab and you can go in and apply various presets for certain looks or adjust all of those settings manually. So once you've done that, select the video tab or if you're coming directly from the timeline, remember to click on the video footage that you want to apply the color correction to, click on the edit tab, and you should be directly in the basic section already. So to key out the background, we're going to select the chroma key option. And as you can see, it's automatically applied a key using the color green. If we had have used a blue background or any other color, it would have automatically detected that and applied the key. If you wanna make any further adjustments or if you just find that it didn't quite key out the footage as you expected, you can use the color picker here, go in and point on the green background and it will create that key for you again. So that's almost perfect. There are some settings that we can use to perfect the key. The first one is offset. So let's have a look at what happens there. When you click on offset, you will notice that as we go into the negatives, we remove the key and as we go into the positives, we create a more solid key. So you can play around with that setting until you get rid of all that background. Now to better see the effect of this key, you can actually use the alpha channel. You can see much more clearly what's going on 
as you get a black and white representation of the mask that's being created. So you can see we have the black area here, which is completely keyed out. And we have some gray area, which is that shadow that I was talking about earlier in the video. When you're shooting too close to the background, you're gonna get a little bit of shadow. So in order to take care of that shadow, you can use this offset feature until you find that the shadow minimizes or goes away. So if we get to around that point there, there's some shadow at the base that we might need to take care of. And to do that, we could use the tolerance slider until we get a complete black and white image. And that means that we have a pretty clean key. We can then adjust the edge thickness and we can also adjust the feathering. So to make those final adjustments, I'm gonna uncheck the alpha channel and have a look at that footage with the actual background behind me. And that is looking pretty good. I'll just adjust that edge thickness. If we go too far with the edge thickness, you can see we get a gray border around our footage. And if we cut in too much by going into the negatives too far, it kind of cuts into the actual foreground element. So you've got to get the balance just right there. And then you can play around with the edge feather for a smoother outline or a sharper outline, depending on the look that you're going for. As you can see, we still have the issue of the left and right side of the frame, which contains some of the wall and the lighting and props in my studio, which I actually want to key out as well. So we're going to use a mask to key out those extra elements. To do that, we click on the mask tab and we're going to select the best shape to create a mask around our green screen. Now this green screen happens to have a little bit of curvature around it. So I'm gonna use a circle, but if your green screen is completely square, you're probably gonna be better off using the rectangle. I'm gonna select the circle and then I'm going to change the height of the circle with the slider. And then I'm going to adjust the width until we get to the extremes of the background. As you can see, the further out I go, we start to introduce the white wall. So I'm gonna bring that back in until we close in and close the gaps and just get to the very edge of that green screen. So now we have the background filling out the full frame behind me. Let's take a look at that. It's presenting within this confinement of the green screen backdrop. Ideally, if you purchase these online, they're of a certain size that so you might take care of that by cropping out those sides in post-production using Filmora. So, okay. so that's all there is to creating green screen using Filmora. What if you wanna use that particular footage as a picture in picture scene sitting on top of some screen recording or gameplay, for example? Let me show you how to do that. I'll lift that footage up to the third layer and the background can be lifted to the second layer. Now I'm going to resize these layers by clicking on them and in the transform tool, scaling. And then we can move it into any position on screen. So go to the basic tab in the editor and then use the position mark to position that green screen footage using the X and Y parameters. Click on OK. Let's grab some footage to place behind me. This could be any kind of video that you've created before. And now we have our picture in picture window. If you don't wanna have that background behind you, so you've got a more seamless look, just use the green screen footage alone and position it using the X, Y parameters in the transform tool so that you can position it anywhere on screen. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit me up with a like and consider subscribing to the channel. If you wanna see more videos on how to use Filmora, to create your own videos, I'll leave a link to some of those in the description box below. See you on the next one, bye for now.